who we think we are is completely shaped by the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves. And our story is the most sacred thing that we have. And so in my work, when I look at storytelling as a healing modality, actually, I didn't send a single proposal to be on TEDx. I was invited. There's a different way to do this where you don't have to push and, and, and move mountains outwards, but you can rather magnetize, create the opportunity to come to you. Forbes came to me, TEDx came to me, um, you know, the vast majority of podcasts I've been on, including Tony Robbins's podcast, they came to me. Keep your soul. Do not ever lose yourself. And if you lose yourself, come back um, because there's no amount of money. There's no amount of influence. There's no amount of like people whose lives you've touched that is going to, at the end of the day, compensate for you abandoning yourself. Hi, and welcome to The Light Leaders, a podcast for light workers and leaders of the new earth. I'm Alex, your host. And on this channel, I interview my favorite guests and share on the topics I'm interested in that I believe will help us co-create the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. A world where we live in harmony with each other, with nature and other beings, and live connected with spirit while keeping in mind that the new us we want to manifest starts from within. These conversations are for inspiration. I always encourage you to make your own truth, keep what resonates and discard what doesn't. I send much love your way and enjoy this episode. Hi, and welcome to this new episode of The Light Leaders. Today, I'm with Celine D'Acosta, and we'll talk about personal branding. She's an author, speaker, and master coach specializing in rewiring the subconscious mind for aligned success. She partners with high-achieving, purpose-driven experts, CEOs, and executives to transform them into confident, fully expressed leaders with compelling stories influential brands, and a loyal following. Celine's multidimensional expertise encompasses diverse modalities, including neuro-linguistic programming, breath work, hypnotherapy, trauma-informed somatic facilitation, shamanic energy medicine, and emotional intelligence, and life coaching. Her unique holistic approach has made her a sought-after expert with a proven track record of empowering her clients which include top industry leaders and Fortune 200 executives to embody their greatness. She's a celebrated speaker and has delivered a TEDx talk on the power of human connection. Her work is featured in major international media outlets, including Forbes, Entrepreneur, and Business Insider. I'm really excited to have you today, Celine. And for the listener and the watchers on YouTube, you can check the chapters to go to the section that really interests you the most. My first question to you, Celine, is what are you grateful for today? Hmm. I am grateful for so many things, but I would say the first thing that comes through is I'm grateful to be living somewhere where I have access to nature and where my feet get to be on the earth within seconds of me thinking the thought. Um, I can go outside and be under a tree and look out at the ocean and the mountains. And I'm very grateful mm. for that. Thank you so much, Selena. And so let's jump into the, the topic of personal branding. I'd like to add a little bit of backstory about you. Uh, how did you get into coaching, building the business and building the personal brand to support that? So when people ask me variations of that question, the answer is this, is I didn't choose this, it chose me. Um, I never had a moment where I was like, I want to be a coach. I want to do coaching. I want to do personal branding. I want to do, you know, helping people with their story work. Um, it was a result of me taking a leap of faith in my life where I decided that I was no longer willing to live a life that was not authentically me. And I decided to do one of the biggest, scariest things at the time of my life. Uh, I was working in New York City in uh, corporate advertising. Um, and I left with a one-way ticket. Um, and uh, I designed a social experiment in which I challenged myself to uh, circumnavigate uh, the globe 
uh, by couchsurfing without using the website. And what that means is that I spent about a year um, sleeping in the homes of friends, friends of friends, strangers that I would meet on the road and just um, threw myself into this crazy wild experiment with the intention of discovering what my purpose was, of remembering who I was and uh, proving to myself that I could live a life uh, of my dreams. And when I decided to uh, embark on this, you know, spiritual odyssey, you could call it, um, it, it, I started to write my story. I started to tell my story. And because I had a background in brand strategy, I had an understanding of how to leverage my words on social media, media. Um, I had a bit of a framework of how can I get my message out into the world? But truly, most of it I actually learned by doing it. And every day I would tell a story about my life. I would tell a story about the people that I would meet on the road and how they inspired me and what I was learning. And through my natural organic sharing, coming from my heart, just speaking into my truth, um, you know, two months went by, three months went by, six months, nine months, um, my channels started to grow. Um, I got the attention of Forbes who invited me to um, have my own column in, with the magazine. Um, I started to get invited by other media to, to share my story. And I started being contacted by entrepreneurs. Um, at the time, it was people who had startups or new companies asking me, you know, I, at the time I had tens of thousands of followers and they're like, how are you doing this? And this was before the time where you could just buy them or, you know, all these strategies and hacks that exist that I've lost track of today. It was back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And people started to ask me, how are you doing this? How are you um, captivating the attention of this big media, big podcast? Um, how are you have so many followers? How do you have so much engagement? And, um, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know, actually, I'm just telling my story. Um, but I'll take a look at what you're doing. And I can see, let's have a conversation. I'll help you out. Um, long story short, me just naturally helping people and with my gifts ended up turning into this business that I've that has developed um, around helping people really grow a potent, uh, aligned, embodied personal brand, as well as share a story that really touches people, like touches them in their soul, um, which then translates in, you know, 3D language, it translates into ideal clients who want to buy from you. Um, but it's deeper than that. And so the coaching um, was a development. It was it was what was being asked of me. You know, when I was listening to God, Source, Universe, um, and I was going with the flow, uh, I was asked to step into this work. And when I stepped into this work, uh, as when you're in flow, as when you're in, in your dharma, um, as it happens, it was easy. It was it was effortless. It was me. Um, and so I don't ever even think about. I don't think often about why I decided to become a coach because it just it's just what I'm meant to be doing. It's just the work I'm meant to be doing. Amazing. Thank you, Celine. That's a great, exciting, authentic story that you've had there. Um, do you want to share a little bit more about uh, the importance in, of storytelling and how you share your story in a way that impacts people? Yeah, of course. Well, let's go back in time first. Let's go back into you know, the origins of humanity. <laughs> to put it bluntly, back to when we were cave people. Storytelling is as old as time. Storytelling is as old as humanity. It has been our main vehicle of communication since we've been humans. Even before we could speak, we could draw, we could tell, we told stories in, in the carvings and in the caves. Um, and that hasn't changed much. You know, you look at the biggest, uh, you look at culture, you know, the founding, founding stone of humanity. Um, culture is founded on oral storytelling. It's founded on tradition. If we're lucky, we have it written down. If we're lucky, we have the paintings on the cave. But so much of it is also just by spoken word. And when we even look at, you know, that's that's the history of storytelling. But we also look at the science of storytelling. It's been proven that stories are 22 times more memorable than facts. When you listen to a good story, it releases feel-good uh, hormones in your body like oxytocin, dopamine get released uh, as a result of you being present and uh, connected to a good story, which I was, as a result makes us more social, makes us more connected. There's um, loads of, of science that also proves the effect that storytelling has in our ability to retain information and in our ability to relate to each other and to actually make meaning and understanding of information. And so mm -hmm. on a core basic level, something that I understood very 
early on in my life and career was that storytelling was the main is the main way you know even in this day this new age day of ads and you know funnels and digital marketing it, nothing replaces the potency of of storytelling that is so wired in our dna and so i understood that early on that if i could tell a story um, you know, th there's a Native um, American saying says those who tell the stories, they rule the world. Uh, and I'm not saying I want to rule the world, but I knew that if I could tell a story that was compelling, engaging and heartfelt, then I would be able to take what's inside of me and transmit it into someone else uh, in the most efficient manner. And so when we look at that, you know, that's the potency of storytelling. And when we look at the potency of a personal story of our story, well, think about it, our story. And the way that we perceive our story is the blueprint to our personality self. You know, you could call it the ego. Um, who we think we are is completely shaped by the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves. And our story is the most sacred thing that we have. It's, it's literally like our entire identity, our memories, the meaning that we make of life, our connections, the people that we love, the way we interact with life. Um, it's all founded on a personal story. And so in my work, when I, you know, I do, so I, I look at storytelling as a healing modality, actually. And it's one of the ways that I really support people in growing into their potential in um, seeing their blind spots and actually uh, releasing limiting conditioning. Because when you start to look at your life story from the day you were born up until today, and you really start to look at it from um, the eyes of the observer and really seeing what is this narrative that I tell myself about who I am, what my values are, why I am the way I am, what matters to me, what I'm afraid of, what I'm traumatized by, everything that composes our personality. Um, it's actually the answers are inside the blueprint of that we call our story. And when we start to go through a story and, you know, so to say, clean it up, clean it up as in looking at all the ways that we are disempowering ourselves through our stories, all the ways we make ourselves small through our stories, what we get to do is we get to unlock more of our gifts. We get to unlock more of our purpose and we actually get to uh, set ourselves free from our past limitations. And so when someone comes to me and they say, you know, can you help me create a potent per a personal brand? Um, what I'm not doing is sitting with them in a Word document and saying, let me, you know, just tell me your story and I'll copyright something really pretty for you. And then here you go. And you can speak that in your on stage. What we're doing is we're looking at all the reasons why they don't feel they're worthy of the brand they're looking to create in the first place of all the ways that they're not speaking with the thing they really want to say, because they're still carrying shame and contraction in their system around their past. And then we're looking at all the gifts and all the places and spaces where they're still not seeing their own brilliance, where they're still, they're so good at something. They don't, they don't even recognize it because they're so unconsciously competent. They don't even see their own brilliance and bringing that to the surface and really looking at that entire narrative of you and reorganizing it, elevating it and cleaning it up so that it's an accurate reflection of who you're here to be and uh, your potential and what you're looking to grow into as part of your dharma. Amazing. Thank you. It reminds me a little bit of something a lot of coaches here do in Bali and my partner, she's been doing it. I haven't done it myself, but the FabEx training with Colin Shell. I'm wondering if you've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have not done it. I know about it. I think she's wonderful. And I've actually attended um, one of those. I would say uh, similar, but different. Um, because the output isn't, you know, the act of being able to stand on a stage and tell your story is already a really big, um, part of the healing. And then I would say the, another piece is how do you take that story and weave it into your business? Weave it. Exactly. So when I shared that, I actually, I actually had in mind that I feel like Fabex would be almost the, the beginning stage where yeah. you find your story and then, but then there's the whole brand you build out of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you build the brand from there and you weave it into uh, your activities. And then you, of course, mm. also step into a deeper embodiment of that story. Um, something I do as well is once we look at the story from the past to the now, we also look at the story you're looking to create in the future um, and how to subconsciously reprogram your mind um, so that you are in alignment and you are acting according 
to your story of the future, which then pulls it closer to the now. But that's more of the quantum <laughs> work. Mm, amazing. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's almost like when you work on the story, it's twofold. There's a coaching and personal growth element of let's look at your story and where your limiting beliefs are and doing the subconscious reprogramming. And that's the basis for the part that you explain you don't only do, which is maybe the more superficial, which is now we're going to craft a nice story. So it comes from that core and it's much more potent to understand yeah. it well. Yeah. And the way that I explain it to my clients, you know, I've had so many clients that did end up being in force. They did end up doing TEDx talks. They did end up publishing their book and having these more tangible outputs to this work. But the way that I share it when people come to me is like, listen, if you're coming to me because you want a Forbes article, or if you want your TEDx talk, like I'm not, I'm not the best person for you. But if you want to become the version of you who's standing on that stage, speaking mm. that story in full transmission and full embodiment to the point where by the time you get on the stage, that's not even the best part of what you received. It's just the cherry on top. It's just the manifestation of the mm. tangible manifestation of all the work you've done because the real fulfillment, the real satisfaction actually sits in the becoming. I like that because um, I've seen here in Bali in the coaching world sometimes things that I feel are a little bit fake, I will say, which is, oh, you know the right person, you pay, and then you're featured on Forbes. Um, yeah, typically, I think I think the TEDx may be less, but at least with the Forbes publication, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, ah, well, so that, does that com come from? And there's a bit of that fakeness, same with Instagram, obviously, buying the followers and all this so I like the idea of mainly focusing on your story and then letting the opportunities come rather than really just focusing on being on Forbes or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, I have a client who's, she just, she's been with me for four years. And actually when she first, we first started working together, I was helping her to finish her book because she was feeling very um, stuck. There was some internal um locks coming up for her and she was not able to finish the book. And so I helped her, supported her with unlocking that, finishing the book. And I've been supporting her with, you know, building a business structure around um, her mission and this book since then. And, you know, even last week she messaged me and she's like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to, um, to do a TEDx talk. Like I'm ready to, to get on a stage. Uh, can you help me? And uh, I remember, you know, we had a session, but we didn't get to address that. And then she sent me a message again saying, I, I want to put together a proposal. And, uh, you know, I'm feeling really stressed about the proposal. And how many people am I going to need to contact? And I was like, I sent her a voice note. I'm like, listen, the reason what we're going to talk about in the next session is I didn't send a single proposal to be on TEDx. I was invited. There's a different way to do this where you don't have to push and 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 move mountains outwards, but you can rather magnetize, create the opportunity to come to you. And mm. I'll show you how to do that. You know, and that was the conversation because a lot of people, there's like this pushing energy. There's this, I need to have this. I need to do this. Um, if I don't do, it, it's going to mean something about me. But when you actually start to clean that up, because it's all, it's just your, you know, again, it's, it's your internal world of not feeling worthy of not feeling like you can do it, not feeling like you'll be seen. And once we clean that up, um, as I'm, you know, doing with, with, uh, this client, it's not a matter of, I need to send out a bunch of proposals. It's a matter of actually standing in your power. And yes, you take intentional action. That being said, the opportunity comes to you. Like Forbes came to me, TEDx came to me. Um, you know, the vast majority of the podcasts I've been on, including Tony Robbins's podcast, they came to me. There's something that, uh, you know, obviously it's beyond what we can cover in today's podcast, but they, there's a way to, to work with the energy and to, um, create to, to become, uh, embody in a way that is magnetic and is compelling instead of a pushing energy. Mm, thank you so much, Celine. That's yeah, interesting because I prepared the podcast being like, oh, she's on Forbes, TEDx. Okay. I'll ask her, uh, how can you do that? <laughs> how did you get there? And, uh, I'm understanding that this is taking a, a different direction, which I love. And so my question then is like, how do you create that magnetism? Oh, it's, it's a multi, this is a multi-layered question. So I'll just go with what's, what wants to be spoken now. Um, the first one is so simple. It might be annoying, but I'll elaborate on it. It's, it's just know thyself, you know, the magnetism, what, the way I see it in my body is that the more I come into myself and by the way, for the record, I'm not sitting here on a pedestal saying I'm all in, like I'm fully embodied. I, I'm a work in progress. 
And what I have found that as I come into deeper communion with myself and just things like feeling my body every single morning in my meditation, like being here, being present, being here, awake, here in this present moment, um, the more I practice this in my life and I can actually feel my core, like that's the best way I can describe it. I can feel my core as I move into places and spaces. If I go to a party, I can feel myself. If I go to an event, I can feel myself. If I'm having this conversation, I can feel myself. Um, I see that as having a gravitational pull. And, and when we are like in our center, in our hearts, uh, you know, the way that I like to think about it is I feel my womb, I feel my heart and I feel my third eye. And I'm like, am I, are we here? You know, mind, body, spirit, are we all here? Yes, we're here. If we're not here, then I got to get back into alignment. Um, and, and then I take the next action. When I do that, this is when magic happens. This is when I'll be like last, last week, I'll be sitting in a, at a pool party and someone will just approach me and have a conversation with me. And that conversation turns into a one hour and a half discussion that then leads into an opportunity for work. You know, it's, it's, um, it's these moments where you are fully present and life gives to you, like delivers to you. Um, I used to do this accidentally. Um, you know, even with Forbes, it was like in that being, um, I would meet somebody who I would really deeply connect with. And that person just happened to be working for Forbes and I didn't know. And they would listen to the way I spoke and see the way I articulate and be like, wow, you really know how to like tell stories. Would you like to share your story? And so um, the second piece around that is in, in terms of magnetism, uh, it, it's not a direct answer to your question, but it's something that feels really important to bring through. Um, one of my core values is human connection, which is why I did the TEDx talk on this. Um, and, you know, presence, which is, it's all inside for those of you who listen to the TEDx talk, you're going to understand this answer more thoroughly. Um, but because of that, I, I really shape my, my existence around the quality of my relationships. Also, because um, something that I learned, I remember reading a uh, Harvard studies where they, they studied people for 70 years across their lifespan. Um, and they did the study to understand what is actually like what determines a happiness of a human being throughout their lives. And the result of that study is actually the quality of their relationships is what determined um, their quality of their lives at the end of their lives. And so in everything that I do, and I would even say anything that I've accomplished, there's always somebody who supported me. There's a person that I had a relationship with who wanted to help, who wanted to give, um, who uh, had an opportunity or they, they, they liked me or they wanted to support me in some way. It's always been relationships. Um, and so even, yeah, the TEDx was a result of a really good friend of mine who got on a stage and recommended me. Forbes was the result of me meeting a friend of a friend. Um, yeah, mo a lot of my podcasts that I'm invited in, I mean, I know you in person. It's, it's human connection. Um, so I would say that it's, it's being in my center and really connecting with people in a truthful, authentic way, I would say are two core, um, if someone would ask me about magnetism mm -hmm. and sure there's all the energy stuff and all the, like, you got to like clean up your thoughts and feel the feelings and elevated feelings and all the Joe Dispenza stuff that, that counts too. But my personal, um, approach to it is, is, uh, be my center, be present. And when people, when I'm connecting with people, be there for them in a really present mm -hmm. way and magic will happen. It will unfold. Amazing. Thank you, Celine. And yes, we know each other from Bali, but for the record, I, contacted you again you were meant to come on the podcast a few years ago i contacted you again from uh, william griffin's recommendation actually i asked him oh, who do you think would be a great guest for my show and uh, he recommended thor which who i did an episode recently and uh, and you actually so again the connections <laughs> another man who understands relationships yes he does <laughs> yeah and by the way, we can talk about it, but I think podcast interviews is definitely uh, an interesting way to, let's say, be smart about relationships too. I'd love to talk about your podcast. But before that, I'd love to ask you, um, where do you mainly base your personal brands of Instagram, right? Oh, this is a really big one because I just posted about a month ago that I am taking my attention away from social media. Mm -hmm. So, um, I created my personal brand. Yes. Mostly on Instagram. Um, and then of course, you know, I was very early on, I was writing for Forbes. 
I was writing for Entrepreneur. Um, I also was featured in quite a few articles. I was a guest writer. So um, a lot of my personal brand was initially founded from being um, contributing to the media, um, contributing to, you know, mostly Instagram. Um, the landscape has changed quite a bit in the past few years. And I would say um, Instagram right now is not my main focus. I'm actually focused on uh, when it comes to my personal brand, I'm doing more private, uh, more intimate containers. Um, I'm focused more on my email list now and, uh, you know, secondary social media, secondary um, email is primary. Um, and actually what I would say is word of mouth in person, part, you know, events, um, networking events, conferences is really where I'm at. Uh, just following the trail of my desire and my core value of human connection. I have found that especially post pandemic, I've really been craving the human touch. So um, I've been more so less loud online, like blasting to tens of thousands of people and mm -hmm. more so focused on making an impact on a core um, group of people whose names I know, um, you know, who I can personally be in deeper connection with. And so that's been a bit of a, I'm still in the middle of that transition. Um, but yeah, you know, social media is amazing. It's an amazing tool. And it's not where my number one focus is going when it comes to my personal brand. Mm, thank you. And you've moved from Bali to Ibiza last October. Do you find being in Ibiza is a better place to do that? Um, I think you can create whatever it is that you want to create from anywhere in the world. It just, what matters is where you feel good. So I don't know if Ibiza is a better place to do that, but it's a better place for me because it's where, mm. it's, uh, you know, this is the land as I was sharing with you before the podcast, this is the land of my ancestors. I'm genetically 86% Southern European, 35% Iberian. So, um, I very much feel that I'm from this land, um, I, uh, I love being close to Europe. I love, there's opportunities. I work with a lot of clients in the U S in Europe. So it brings me closer to them. And, uh, and yes, there is a different focus here. I would say Bali is much more relaxed and, uh, I would say it's got a different flow than Visa does, but Visa is much more, um, there's a different focus on business and career mm. here that I would say than, than what I found in Bali. Mm, okay. Thank you. Yeah, ba Bali's pretty good also, but it's definitely if you don't want to do online as much and want to do in person, there's a few places, I know Ibiza, Tulum, Bali that often come. And yes, you can create your reality, but if you live in uh, the countryside of Poland, for example, it might yeah. be a little bit harder to do things in person. Totally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm curious about uh, your podcast. You have a podcast. Is that a big part of your brand also? Yeah, well, it's funny you say that because we're launching um, a couple of weeks from now. I we're, we're working on the trailer right now. Um, it's called uh, "It's Not What You Think," and uh, it's actually I would say it's a recent add-on to my brand um, because, like I said, I was craving after eight years of being on social media and growing a following on social media. I was really craving to be on platforms where I get to express myself with my voice unapologetically. And it's not that I don't do that on, say, Instagram, but it is true that there's certain things in these days that you can't say on social media. And there are certain limitations that um, I wanted to reclaim my free freedom back. And so I started this podcast. Um, it's not what you think. And the name says it all. Uh, the podcast is centered on uh, having conversations that we are normally typically not having on a collective level. It's really looking at things like, you know, the, the classic sex, money, and power, like what are the things that we are not talking about enough? What are those conversations that we as leaders are having behind the scenes, but we're not having out loud in front of other people? So my intention with this was to have conversations that would break the mold of what we have been collectively conditioned to think and be. Um, you know, interesting conversations like, for example, I'm sure you know Sarita um, speaking about Tantra and what it actually means to be uh, a woman in, in today's world and, and how to how the, the sexes are relating to each other and the healthy and unhealthy ways that that's happening or having real conversations around, you know, I have several uh, seven plus figure business owners coming in and telling the truth about what it actually takes to scale business to that level while maintaining your integrity, while maintaining a freedom lifestyle. Um, conversations such as 
uh, you know, the stock market and what it actually means to distribute wealth. What are the misconceptions that we have around money and how can we correct that so we can generate more wealth in a way that is of new earth alignment, um, but also is tangibly like palpable now. So there's all these conversations that are designed to expand your mind beyond the, the thought patterns, the thought belief systems that you may have been conditioned into and how can we um, defrag those systems, uh, dissolve those and give uh, those who are listening permission to think about these topics in a different expansive way. And by the virtue of you thinking about things differently and not being stuck in old paradigms, then you will expand your mind and you will also expand your perception and perception is what determines reality. So I really believe that through this podcast, um, you can change your reality through these mind bending, uh, perception opening conversations that we are having that will expand people in these very important topics that are happening uh, contemporarily. Amazing. Yeah, that looks exciting. And at the same time, you can learn from the people you have conversations with, you can connect with them, you can produce amazing content, you can expand your reach. So I think that's, a, that's always a, a good way also. Uh, to, mm -hmm. to share about what you do in a way that's yes, super authentic, long form. Mm. Mm. Um, um, mm. <laughs> I'm curious also, as you talked about going to things we talk less about, let's say with um, business, I was curious because you shared about shamanic practices. So what's mm -hmm. the relevance of shamanic practices in building your business? I prefer to use the word energy medicine also because I am in no way, shape or form a shaman. So I just want to be clear on that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I have studied um, under them. And um, what I believe in is, is energy medicine. And what I mean by that is that it's more so of, um, even if we took a more, take a more scientific approach, I have also studied and done a corporate training with um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And, um, and so something that really feels important and relevant for me is marrying the art and the science of working with energy. And something that Dr. Joe says that I really admire is that um, science is the contemporary uh, language of mysticism. And they're also deeply connected. And so even when we look at the nature of reality um, and we look at an atom, an atom is, and I'm going to count it, 99.999999% uh, um, uh, energy. And a tiny, 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 tiny particle of an atom is matter is what we can see with our eyes. It's what's tangible. And so if we look at reality, we look at literally this microphone, my face, this phone, everything that we can see, feel, touch, all of that is 0.000001% of what is actually real, which means that everything else is energy. And so we all, it's been, it's been proven that we all, for example, we have auras, we have electromagnetic fields around us. And, you know, so do plants, animals, like everything is, is composed of energy. And so what I find in my work is that most of the time when something's stuck, when something's not going, it's not that your, you know, your Facebook ads not succeeding. Yes. Sometimes there's a tweak that you can need to tweak a word. You need to make an adjustment. Um, there's a tangible strategy that comes through, but if the tangible strategy, if the workable action that you're applying isn't working. If you're taking mm. action and the action's not working, it means that there is an underlying uh, issue that's actually happening in your internal world. And what that means is that it's not the button. It's not the, the, the thing that you're clicking. It's something deeper than that. And that's when we also talk about the subconscious mind. We talk about, talk about the subconscious mind because there's something that's going on in the energy field that's keeping things stuck. There's a study that, um, that Dr. Joe also talks about, and I'm going to very loosely quote the study because um, I don't remember the details where it, it's like they were, they were studying a group of women and they were measuring um, what was going on in their electromagnetic field. And they could predict with 90% accuracy, um, these were women that had history of ovarian cancer. And they could predict with 90% accuracy that these women would, uh, which of these women would actually develop 
ovarian cancer in their life based on the pattern that was a very distinct pattern that was being reflected in their electromagnetic field. Mm -hmm. So when we have certain thoughts, electro, and we have certain feelings, magnetic, you know, we have these certain emotions is what we use to pull reality towards us. Thoughts is what we use to send a signal like a radio station out into the universe of this is what we want. This is what we're creating. And then we feel the emotions and we pull that in. So when we are basically cultivating an electromagnetic field that is, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. Oh my gosh, I'm not worthy. Oh, there's something wrong with me. Oh, there's something like this. And then you feel shame and you feel guilt. You're pulling towards you people situations and circumstances that reflect back to you what you believe about yourself and the way that you feel about yourself. So that would be the tangible. That would be the mm -hmm. car accident, the diagnosis, the toxic relationship is the tangible manifestation of what you're pulling towards yourself through the thinking and the feeling. This is something that, you know, before science, our elders, the, the elders of, of the indigenous cultures and like many cultures around the world, they understood this really deeply before even needing the science. We have the science now that what we think we create and how we feel pulls in that creation. And so when I'm working with people, it's really about understanding not just what is that workable action that you're taking that is or isn't working. You know, maybe you're, you've emailed 30 people and you're not getting a response. It doesn't mean you're going to not email them and sit on a couch and manifest, but it does mean that maybe there's something inside of you that doesn't want those people to mm. respond to you. There's something within that in your internal landscape that is actually uh, subconsciously rejecting the prospect of you receiving more clients and that's why you're not getting them or you receiving responses and that's why you're not getting it of you not receiving your partner and that's why that person's not showing up. So it's really important to work with what is happening on an emotional level and emotions are energy in motion. What is the energy? that's running through your body, the emotional energy. Mm -hmm. What is the thought energy, the thing, the thoughts that you're thinking? And um, it's about learning how to see in the dark. It's, it's about getting very connected and being able to feel what is it that you're not seeing right now. And so even when we're, when we're looking at, when we even use the word shamanic, um, it's really about being able to see in the dark. And it's, it's about um, what is it that you're pretending not to see? Because what you're not seeing, what's in the unconscious is actually what's determining your reality. And if you're looking at your reality and you don't have what you want, it means you're still getting what you want, but whatever it is that you don't consciously want, you unconsciously want it. So it's a matter of being able to look into what's going on energetically, emotionally, what's happening in the intangible and in that 99.99999% mean like what's happening there that's influencing the 0.00001% that I'm creating. That's a really short, like crash course on really mm -hmm. deep, like there's a lot of layers here on, you know, manifestation, um, working with the quantum field and, and understanding thoughts, feelings, emotions, and how they all work together to create our physical reality. So that was, a, there was a lot that I try to squeeze in in just a, those few minutes, but hopefully that makes sense of how, um, what I mean by energy at medicine, the medicine is being able to resolve what's previously a uh, toxic poisonous to you. If you can resolve it through energy, it becomes um, medicine. And then there's things we can do as well. You know, more if I'm, I'm with clients in person, it's more body work and more working directly with their field. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> Thank you. And when you say energy medicine, does that include plants sometimes? Uh, that would be plant medicine. Yeah, plant medicine. I just, plant just medicine medicine. Can support with energy medicine, but energy is just energy. It's just working directly with energy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so when you say energy medicine, it's, it's plant medicine, just to, to be clear, like working on energy with the help of plants. You can be on general. plant medicine doing energy medicine. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's just the art of, of working with energy to bring it back. The way I see it is to take energy that was previously in distortion, mm. and it's the art of bringing it back into harmony so that the pattern you could say if we even get we'll go deeper than that, when you look at sacred geometry, the pattern is is sacred again, instead of it being distorted. You know, like that water mm. experiment um, that they did where he would speak beautiful, empowering, um, you know, elevated language into water, like love, peace, um, joy, and the water would crystallize in these beautiful, perfect geometric shapes. And then when you said things like war, hate, um, violence, the water would get all distorted. Mm. 
this is what happens when we speak to ourselves. This yeah. is what happens within our energy field. And we are water as well. You know, we're 70 percent water and that water is listening. Um, the water inside of us is absorbing, is listening. Uh, it's a conductor. And so when we are speaking these, um, you know, dysfunctional thought patterns and these things, these negative things to ourselves, that's what we're creating inside of our energy field. We're creating distorted patterns and those distorted patterns when you reflect your energy through that distorted pattern, similar to a hologram, um, you're reflecting your thoughts, even if you have the best of intentions of creating um, something beautiful, if it's going through the filter of trauma, of distortion, uh, it's going to come out as a reflection of that pattern. And so um, that's why it's really important for us to clean up, clean up the pattern, bring it back into harmony, bring it back into its sacred geometry, so that whenever we do take an action, that action has a positive mm -hmm. consequence. When we are bringing forward our intention and our energy into an action, and it goes through a pattern that's clean and clear, then what comes out of the of the hologram, what actually forms into physical reality, will be an accurate reflection of the pattern. That's why if you're trying to project, um, you know, your actions through a distorted pattern, the result will never actually be. Uh, um, it will never be the way you imagined it in, or the way you desired it in your intention. Does that make sense? It gets mm -hmm. distorted. Yeah. It does, it does. Thank you. I'm curious also, um, what's the grand vision for you? Like, how do you picture what you're building? <sighs> you know, it's such an interesting time for you to ask me this because I thought I had a grand vision. And in many ways, I controlled different areas of my life to get to that vision. And I'm actually in a stage of my life that realizing that what if God universe has a much bigger plan for me than the vision I'm trying to fit into. So mm. there are things I desire, you know, I desire to come into deeper and deeper embodiment of my soul during my walk on this earth. That's very important to me. Um, I desire to be just enriched with high quality relationships and an extremely meaningful life where every step I take is just brimmed with joy and meaning as much as I can. I desire to, through my work, be able to support people to reclaim their voice, to own their story, and to be able to show up as embodied aligned leaders um, with a mission that is going to change the world in a positive way. Um, I desire that my contribution on this planet has high levels of impact. I'm quite ambitious in that way. I really desire to have a strong impact on the world in what I do. But lately, I've just been letting go of how I need to do it or what that vision needs to look like because I have a strong feeling that where I'm being led right now, my mind can't go. It's actually beyond that. Um, I've been getting several signs from the universe just being like, hey, what if you just stop thinking that this is the best thing for you? And what if you just let us show how you how good can it get? So a question you know that I've been asking myself very frequently lately is how good can it get? How good can it get? And how can I add more joy into this? And similar to when I left my corporate job in 2016 and I had no idea where I was going. I had no idea what would become of me. I didn't have a plan. And then I was life delivered me with a plan that was far grander than anything I could have imagined when I um, boarded that plane in New York City. I couldn't have known that a year later I would have, you know, built a six figure business and I would have, uh, you know, been offered these incredible opportunities and I would be traveling the world and I would be living a life that I could previously only dream of. I had no idea. And I have a feeling that in this stage of my life today, I'm in a similar place um, where life is sending me a lot of clues. This time I'm listening way better than I did, um, you know, eight years ago. And, um, and I'm being ushered into a vision that I actually don't, it's too big for me to hold in my brain. So I'm letting myself just focus on just anchoring into my values, anchoring into my core, um, and allow myself to be the person, the person that I'm proud of, that I admire. And I feel that whatever that person, whoever she is, like, however she moves in the world, it's going to be the best possible thing, vision for me. It's just going to unfold.
Beautiful. Thank you, Celine. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's, it's always an interesting dance um, between our intention and uh, our surrender to to the universe. So thanks for bringing that. I'm also curious because that we shared and, you know, you have an um, amazing business and things that are going really well, which uh, is amazing. I'm curious also if you have any main challenges with your business right now. Yeah. Um, my main challenge is not getting lost in the act. And what I mean by that is as my business has grown, what I've realized is how seductive it can be to grow for the sake of growing, to scale for the sake of scaling, and to get comfortable with what works and what's been working, even when it's no longer what works for you now. And so my challenge has been saying no to things that, you know, quote unquote, generate good income because they don't feel right to my spirit. That's, and then the second challenge is when I do say no is dealing with the scarcity that can come up or the fear. Oh my gosh, I have all of this overhead or I built this entire thing and needs to, I need to keep feeding it. What do I do now? And trusting myself that something better is coming, that, that, that my decisions are right. I would say, yeah, the biggest challenge is really the places and spaces where I'm making decisions um, according to what feels right to my spirit and they might not make sense on paper. Uh, and then, mm. you know, even things like getting off, um, not being on Instagram as much. Uh, it doesn't make sense on paper for me to do that. It's been working for me this whole time. So why would I back away from my main marketing engine for me to build something new? Um, on paper, it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense in my soul. And so mm. I'm not yet in a place where I can tell you what all the results I've gotten from making these changes because um, I'm still very much in making the changes. But I would say something, and this is something that I, I have seen with my colleagues, I have seen with my clients, and I can actually, thanks to me experiencing it firsthand in my business, I have opened my eyes and can really see the way this is impacting so many people. When we build things that are working, when we build things that are profitable and they're making really good money, sometimes, you know, like more than we've ever seen or thought we would see in a lifetime. And it's that moment of pause of, um, okay, but does this feel right to me? Is this the right, uh, is this in alignment? Am I still walking the path of heart? And if the answer is no, then something's got to change. And a lot of times I see that people most struggle is at making that change. And that's also where, where my, um, my path has been is, is um, choosing choosing myself, choosing my sustainability, choosing who I'm becoming in the future and learning the skill sets that are required both internal as well as practical workable actions to to sh uh, uh, shift the ship to to change directions when it's time to change directions so i would say that's where i have felt um the biggest challenge in my business this past year yeah thank you celine that's so always interesting because in life there's uh there's different games we can play and there's different ladders of success so you see in business can be making money and then uh and then all of a sudden, what matters is love, relationships, and that becomes much more important. And then you have cultures in India to be a good sadhu, you must be good at renunciations. All these things can be can be very different uh, success ladder. So it's it's a love that you uh, play the game without getting lost in it in a way and keep keep that alignment with your soul as a priority. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's message. the number one priority, Alex. Honestly, I've. You know, it's in my, I'm still young in the sense that I've had eight years of career of doing this work. So it's not, you know, I'm not speaking 20 years, but, but I have had the immense privilege of being mentored by what I believe are some of the most world-class coaches, experts um, on the planet. And uh, even though, you know, my experience plus their 20, 30, 40 years of experience that they've poured into me the the one recurring theme you know i've i've been mentored by people who made a bunch and then lost it all and then made it again or or worked their way up or you know everything in between and no matter what who i'm speaking to um the story is the same it's it's that whatever you're building like keep your soul 
do not ever lose yourself. And if you lose yourself, come back. Um, because there's no amount of money. There's no amount of influence. There's no amount of like people whose lives you've touched that is going to, at the end of the day, compensate for you abandoning yourself. And, 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 um, that is going to, to plug up that hole. So the best thing we can always do in life, business, love, um, that I'm learning and I'm stepping into in this phase of my life is, is checking in with myself and really, um, checking into like, is this right for my soul? And when I can't be accountable for that, I have my handy little pendulum that I swing and I, and I let it tell me the truth. And then it tells me the truth. And if the pendulum, if I'm still listening to my pendulum, then I have my friends to call and they can tell me the truth, but nothing is, uh, it's always it, whatever is right to your spirit, whatever's going on in life, as long as you're right with your spirit, it's going to be okay. That's what, I, that's what I've discovered in my journey. Amazing. Thank you so much, Celine. And we're touching upon the end of this episode. I'd love to uh, have your, uh, you close, especially with what's next for you and how people can connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's next for me? Well, um, and that's the same, uh, it ties to connection. Um, well, for those of you who want to connect, um, there's a couple ways that you can do that. So on Instagram and social media, I am at Celine DaCosta, C-E-L-I-N-N-E-D-A-C-O-S-T-A. -N -N -E -S so one L, we'll two N. And put the links yeah, in the description. Good. good. And my website, for those of you who are interested in my offerings, I have self-led courses. Um, group, I have a group program as well as private one-on-one uh, coaching. And you can go find that information on CelineDaCosta.com. Um, for those of you who you know really love this conversation and would like to dive into more of these deep conversations, come and listen to my podcast, it's not what you think. And, uh, and last but not least, uh, in the spirit of me moving my communication, my branding, my connection less on social media, um, I would invite you to come and subscribe to my email newsletter. It's selenedacosta.com slash newsletter. And this is where I tell the stories, the long stories that never make it to social media, um, the crazy things that are happening in my life and, and the really the behind the scenes deep dive um, is going to be on my email list. So I invite you to go there. And yeah, that's, that's where I'll be. I'll be cultivating this podcast. I'll be writing uh, my heart out to the email list. And that's where you can find me, connect with me and find out what's, what's next for me as well. Amazing. Thank you. And I'd like to echo that also. It's nice to have the email list because in the end it also belongs more to you as an entrepreneur, right? Rather, rather than having the intermediate of the platforms and the potential exactly. shadow banning and censorship and all this. Actually, as you shared that, I had one more question, which was, um, do you plan to have a membership community? I've seen a lot of people with a big personal brand start with school, especially recently. I don't know if you're familiar with this one too. And yeah, you is that the um, I am considering it. I'm considering mm -hmm. having a membership. Yes, I love school. I'm a huge fan. Um, and right now, my focus is on my um, private one-on-one -on -one coaching, just really mm -hmm. serving those clients. Um, and then once that's once I am, you know, there's a few changes that I'm making, and there's a few evolutions that I'm creating in the ways that I work with people. And once that feels really grounded and settled, my next focus is my uh, group program, which is Business by Soul. And just, you know, um, I've just finished a cohort and I will be opening one up again soon, just filling it with the most incredible humans who really want to learn how to own their story and create a business from soul. Um, and mm -hmm. once that's stabilized, that's when I'm going to look at opening it up um, to a, a wider public. Um, but that will probably, you know, one of the things I'm learning with business right now is um, taking a step back to take a step forward. And I just want to ensure that every step of what I'm doing feels super solid, super grounded. And when that is, then that's when I'll start looking at it. Amazing. Thank you. And I love the approach. To be honest, I'm a big fan of school also. But one thing I'm less a fan of is that they, they promote starting a community as like the easiest way to do business 2024. What I've been finding is especially for coaches, usually it works better to start one-on-one, -on -one, then do groups and then do a community from that strong market fit foundation rather than starting with a community. So that's my, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure some people do well starting with community, but it feels like a, a better order in general. Yeah. yeah, yeah, feels more. It's I'm, I'm, uh, I started my work in high ticket coaching that's where I plan to go. So anything that I create outside of that needs to fit under the umbrella of that brand. Mm -hmm. Amazing. 
Thank you so much, Celine, and thank you to everyone who listened. Have a beautiful day. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. Now, after five years of podcasting, 200 episodes and over 300,000 views, I have decided to support other leaders of the new US to build their own podcast. If you want to have more impact through a podcast, click the link in the description and we can have a chat. I send much love and blessings your way.